Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Exploring Awesome. I'm your host, Jim Kellner, and each episode I talk to people who are doing awesome things, and then I invite them to share their tips, tricks, and strategies for living a more awesome life so that you and I can begin to live an even more awesome life. Hey, if you're watching the, the live stream, I'm live streaming over at YouTube. Please forgive me. I didn't check my background very well. I've got a big pile of laundry back there. I just moved and uh, still trying to get things put away. So um, please, uh, please, uh, please take that into consideration. Anyway, I wanted to, you know, each week, as I say, I talk to people who are living awesome lives, and uh, I get their tips, tricks, and strategies. Now, I am a hypnotist, but I don't, I don't do hypnosis on every episode. But uh, occasionally, I do feel like it would be a great thing to to talk about some. Uh, hypnosis. I'm just going to go ahead and share some stuff on social media right now. What I'd like you to do, if you would like to participate in the conversation, I invite you right now to give me a call. Now, actually, this is, I should tell you, um, if you're if you're listening live, this is Tuesday, September 15th, 2020 at about 11 a.m. Pacific. So if you're listening at any other time, I'm afraid I won't answer. But if you want to give us a call right now, the number is 516-387-1660. Again, that's 516-387, excuse me, 1660. And as always, I'm so happy that you could join me today. Now, um, I get a lot of um, interesting questions about um, hypnosis, and that's why I definitely wanted to to share this um, with you, uh, share these, share this, uh, sorry, this information with you today. Now, um, again, uh, also I want to let you know if you're listening to, on one of my social media platforms, um, please comment in the uh, comment section, and I will call in live. Uh, hold on, there we go. Sorry, we got that posted. All right, I need a producer. That's what I need. All right. Who wants to be my producer? Pays very little, but uh, lots of appreciation. I'm sure everybody wants to do that. Hey, okay, so let's get right down to it. Uh, hypnosis. Um, it's such a widely misunderstood modality, and I, I always try to come up with, with ways to explain it to people that makes it maybe a little bit less uh, esoteric, kind of strange, all that kind of thing. Um, and, uh, and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to, to do that today. I've got a great metaphor, I think, that, that just came to me in the shower. So um, I hope that, uh, that it makes a little more sense for you. So, uh, again, if you're, uh, I think I may have uh, – I got off track a little bit. If you're on one of my social media channels, right now I'm going live on YouTube. Um, we've got the link over at Facebook. So if you're over there – Please comment your questions, and I will answer them um, as I'm able to. If I don't answer it on today's episode, I will make a note of it, and I will answer next time. So please feel free to, to drop your answer or just um, also email me questions, jim at jimkellner.com. First question I want to tackle. I got this question a while back uh, from, uh, from someone, and, uh, and so I wanted to, to tackle this. Uh, and I'm making notes here because I'm getting some questions in right now. Uh, okay, great. Thank you for your question. <laughs> this this one uh, this one took me by surprise. Someone asked me, uh, "Do you need to be psychic to be a hypnotist?" Uh, the, the quick answer is no. And I'll and I'll, I'll tell you something. You know, I, I'm not sure exactly why uh, hypnosis is still sort of uh, lumped in 
lumped in, I guess, is the best way to put it, with some of the, um, uh, I don't know how to say it, but, but more esoteric, maybe less scientific uh, modalities out there. And, uh, and I know less scientific is, is going to be uh, subjective because some people think that, um, you know, psychic science is science, but, uh, but you know, there's really not a whole lot of research that backs that up. Um, I, have, I have seen some things that claim to, but then when you look a little bit further, you find that, that they haven't. And, you know, the amazing Randy has had a million-dollar challenge out there for a very long time that no one has been able to, to, to capture, um, uh, get from him. And so, you know, there's, there's probably not is, 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 uh, is, is my guess. Now, will we in the future uh, come up with a way to prove it, maybe utilize it more? I don't know. But so, again, the answer is no. You do not have to be psychic to be a hypnotist. I'm not psychic at all. I can't give you any lottery numbers. If I could, I wouldn't be doing the show right now. I'd be on a beach somewhere um, enjoying a, a cocktail. But it's an interesting question, again, because people have this idea that it's sort of, that we get sort of, um, that it's sort of this esoteric thing. Um, and so uh, I think people sometimes will think of it uh, as magic. You know, is it, is it magic? Because that's another question I've gotten before. Is it magic? And it's not. You know, magic is, is trickery. It's using, you know, it's um, if you, when you, um, when you know about magic, you, you, you know that really it's just an illusion. There's no real magic that I know of. If you're out there practicing magic, good for you. Please, please let me know or don't let me know. That stuff creeps me out. So you don't have to be magic. And there's, again, so what I would, let me just, <laughs> I don't want to insult anybody. So let me just, instead of talking about those things, let me just talk about what hypnosis is. Hypnosis is really just a way to talk with your unconscious mind. And it's been, it's actually been scientifically backed up. And I know, you know, some people don't, don't care about that sort of thing, you know, and, and that's fine. I say, you know, just because something hasn't been proven by science doesn't mean it's not legitimate. It just means we haven't, we haven't proved it yet. You know, I think of uh, one of the, the illustrations that I think of is um, a couple hundred years ago, we couldn't, uh, Mike, we couldn't um, measure microwaves that were flying through the air, you know, microwaves, actual little microwaves. But now we have microwave ovens that we can cook a burrito in. So just because we couldn't quantify it back then didn't mean it didn't exist. We just didn't have the tools for it. So, you know, someday maybe someone will uh, come up with a way to quantify some of these things that, you know, like tarot reading and, and psychic stuff and, and these other uh, things like this. But, um, hypnosis is actually, um, it's, you know, it's so simple. It's so absolutely simple because really, again, it's just a way to talk to the unconscious mind. The, um, the unconscious mind is really the most powerful part of us. And, and sometimes we, it's been called the subconscious, the unconscious. I usually will call it the other than conscious so as not to be, um, causing distress for people that, that might um, disagree with it, subconscious, unconscious, whatever. But a lot of people will think of it as the, the subconscious. Um, other than conscious mind is, is operating most of what's going on with you. And if you don't believe me, uh, think about this. Think about the, what you do first thing in the morning. You probably do it every single morning. It's that autopilot. That's, that's that probably, oh gosh, 90% or more of what we do is autopilot. Think of when you get into a car. You're on, if you're driving, uh, if you're a driver, you go on autopilot. You don't even have to check the. You don't even have to think to check the mirrors or to put on your seatbelt. Those kinds of things. Now, when you first started driving, you did need to do that. So, um, really, when you can talk to the unconscious mind, the other than conscious mind, all kinds of things are are, are incredibly um, possible. And I'll talk maybe a little bit more about that um, a bit later. Think of it like this. If the unconscious mind is sort of like the, the background computer, and if you're able to get in there and write the code for it, then you can, you can get it to do just about anything. Uh, the problem is most of us are going through life, um, you know, where we tell ourselves, you know, 10 p.m. the night before, okay, tomorrow morning I'm going to get up at 6 a.m. and I'm going to go for a run. 
and then uh, 6 a.m. rolls around, and that other than conscious mind has those habits that are already ingrained, and it says, 6 a.m., no, and it's snooze. And so, and even though you may be able to force yourself and actually get out with that conscious mind, um, the, the chances of it really sticking, uh, not that great. Not that great, unfortunately. So that's why, that's why we use hypnosis. I'm checking some comments here, checking some questions. Okay, good. Perfect. I want to let you know again, if you're watching live, but uh, about 10 after 11 p.m. on September, what is this, 15th? I got already, 15th. Uh, the number to call in is 516-387-1660. Again, that's 516-387-1660. If you miss it this time, be sure and check back in two weeks when I'll have a guest on. Okay, so no, you do not have to be a psychic. You don't have to be a magician. You don't have to know how to be a card reader. Uh, I will tell you, unfortunately, a lot of people in my profession, they sort of gravitate to those things as well, so the line does get blurry. So you're going to find people that, that um, are, uh, call themselves psychic. I'm not saying they're not, but I'm saying that that's, they use that as their title. They're psychic. They're also a hypnotist. I'm not psychic. You don't have to be. Okay? So... Let's move on before I piss off a lot of colleagues. <laughs> okay, so that's that's first question. Um, the other question I wanted to address was, oh, it looks like I, ah, good. Okay, that's a great question. I will, um, great. Yeah, you're welcome to message me anytime. Jim at jimkellner.com. I will answer those questions. Um, but it's, that's a great question. Okay, we'll get back to that. Um, uh, thank you, David. I'll get to it in just a second because I want I want to hit on this one real quick because I, I get this sometimes. You know, when someone comes into me and they'll they'll say something like, you know, for hypnotherapy because I do both. If you're not aware of my work, um, and you can always find me at jimkellnerhypnotist.com. And if you'd like to try hypnosis for free, I invite you to check out my uh, my unlimited happiness free download. That's over at jimkellnerhypnotist.com slash free dash hypnosis. Uh, I do stage, I do comedy hypnosis shows. I also do, uh, well, street hypnosis. That's another, another demonstrational type hypnosis. But I also do hypnotherapy. And so they're they're very different. And, some, and, and sometimes people will ask me, kind of half-jokingly, though, you know, they come in to quit smoking, and they say something like, are you going to make me, you know, cook like a chicken or bark like a dog, or vice versa? And I always tell them, if I thought that it would help you to quit smoking or lose weight or stop feeling anxious, absolutely. I don't think it would help, though. Um, <laughs> so I don't. So, no, I do not. Uh, uh, when, you, when you work with me for hypnotherapy, I'm not going to make your, your hands stick to a table or I'm not going to make you forget the number two like I might do in a street hypnosis skit or anything like that. It's a completely different experience. Completely different experience. And the thing is, if, let's just say, for instance, you came in to quit smoking and I, uh, when you're in hypnosis, I go, you know, every time that I snap my fingers, you're gonna you're gonna bark like a dog. You most likely wouldn't anyway, because the other than conscious mind, you know, a lot of a lot of um, the filter with the other than conscious mind is going to filter out things that are um, that are out of context. You know, it's that's not within the realm. Your unconscious mind is going to go, yeah, that doesn't that doesn't fit. That that doesn't that's not in alignment with what my goals are. Now, if we had talked before and I said, you know, every time you uh, want to have a cigarette, you're going to bark like a dog, um, so that will make you, you know, be more aware to stop, absolutely, then, then we, we might do that. In fact, I do use some techniques like that for other things. I might uh, give you the suggestion that every time you turn on a light switch, you're reminded of how much you love yourself, something like that. So we can certainly use some of that, what we call hypnotic phenomenon, and those are just things that are um, – uh, maybe um, we might use in like a demonstrational type way. Um, same thing when I stick someone's hand to their head or 
or make them forget the number two. Uh, and there's also, you know, one of the things, I, you know, I made, a, I made a big mistake with my TEDx talk. Um, if you can't be hypnotized, you lose, because I guess, apparently I didn't stress enough to people that, that if you don't have the, in the, in the talk, if you haven't seen it, I have people um, imagine that their hands are stuck together. Now, that only works for about maybe, depending on the audience and the situation, everything, maybe 10 to 20, 30 percent of the people out there that are able to use their imagination in a way that allows them to really lock those hands together where they just, they won't come apart until I tell them that they come apart. I guess I didn't stress enough that that, that has nothing to do with hypnotizability. It just shows me um, in, the, in the long term. It just shows me who might who might go into hypnosis a little bit quicker, a little bit easier in a demonstration, uh, and that's why we might do something like that for a stage show, um, or a street hypnosis, or you know like a TEDx talk. Because I didn't have time to do a longer uh, what we call induction. That's the induction is the process of getting people into hypnosis. I didn't have time to do a big long induction. It's only 18 minutes long, so uh, I'm trying to find the best candidates for quick hypnosis. Now here's the thing. I, I, I said in the video, in the, in the TEDx talk, you know, um, you, your hands do not have, you know, just because your hands don't stick together doesn't mean you can't be hypnotized. It just means that in this moment, you know, you just you weren't able to use your imagination in a way which stuck those hands together. But I still get people that will watch the video and go, I guess I can't be hypnotized. And I'm like, oh, no, everyone can be hypnotized. If you don't believe me, go watch my TEDx talk. I'll explain more about it. If you think you can't be hypnotized, it's really – it's really because you don't understand exactly what hypnosis is. Once you understand what it is, you'll find that it's a completely natural state. Everyone can be hypnotized. All right. So, um, so no, I'm not going to bark like a dog. You're not going to cluck like a chicken unless you want to. Let's see. Uh, okay, and then the, the question we just got in, and I, I've heard this before, too, and it's a – it's, a, it's an interesting question, and I get it, because I do both. I do, you know, like I say, I do stage shows, I do comedy hypnosis. Sometimes people will say something like, along the lines of, how can you be funny? Uh, that's subjective. <laughs> Believe me, some people don't think I'm funny. But how can you be funny and also help people to lose weight, quit smoking, become more motivated, whatever? And so I'm always trying to come up with a good metaphor for this. And I've, I've tried it for a, a few different ones, but I think I've got the great metaphor. You see, hypnosis is a tool. And, you know, we can use tools for different uses. You don't have to use um, uh, a tool uh, for just one thing. For instance, a hammer, right? You can use a hammer, to, uh, a, claw, a claw hammer. You can use it to pound nails in. You can also use it to pull nails out. I thought of a, an even better metaphor. I'm going to try it out on you right now, so you can let me know in the comments, did this make it clear for you? Think about your smartphone. Think about your smartphone. Uh, it's not really even a smart, not even really a phone. It's actually, these days, really a, a portable computer that has a phone app on it, and most of us use the phone app far less than we use everything else. I think of this, is, this was the new metaphor, so let's find out. If you're a hypnotist watching, please let me know if this, if this resonates and this makes sense to you. Okay. Maybe this will catch on. Trademark, Jim Kellner. All right, here we go. Uh, a smartphone. So the smartphone, let's think of the smartphone as your brain, okay? And hypnosis is the operating system. So if you have a... You know, if you have a, uh, an iPhone, that's going to be the Apple operating system. If you have an uh, Android phone, it's going to be the Android operating system. So hypnosis is the um, – hoping. It seems, it seems so much better in my mind when I was taking a shower. But, um, so we'll think of hypnosis uh, as, the, uh, as the operating system, okay? That's the tool, right? Because we can use our minds for lots of different things. Wait, is the mind going to uh, – I uh, may be losing myself on this metaphor. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to give that one some more thought. I think the hammer metaphor might be better. Uh, and so uh, when we have a tool like a hammer, we can use it for, for different uses. We can use it as a hammer and a nail. We can also pull out um, – we can also pull that nail out again. We can also use it for prying or, or just smashing a glass or something. So hypnosis – think of hypnosis as the tool, and I'm using it for different things. 
in so, uh, you know in some cases uh, I'm using it to again make someone forget the number two. If you if you're curious about that, if you haven't seen that, go over to my my playlist um, uh, street hypnosis and demonstrations. You'll see uh, I can I make uh, just recently I made a guy uh, I showed a, I put up a video of Ernest forgets the number two counts one two and can't remember one three five can't you know cannot remember the number two. So check it out. The uh, uh, right. So, so in some cases, I'm using that tool, that hammer, to um, create hypnotic phenomenon. Things that are really that are that really stand out. I guess you'd think of them as as um, things that um, that look cool. All right. That demonstrate the power of hypnosis. That's what you use it for too. It's for entertainment, but but I use it a lot for for just demonstrating the power of hypnosis. Because here's 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 the thought here is if I can can make someone forget the number two, you know, for, for a little bit, or I can make someone on stage, comedy hypnosis, so I can make them think they're Taylor Swift for, you know, 45 minutes, do you think I can help you to quit smoking, you know, quit thinking about cigarettes? Most likely. Uh, but then the, on the other hand, I can use that same tool, that same hammer, to do hypnotherapy, because it's just that same tool. Hypnosis being the tool over here, we call it hypnotherapy because we're using the therapeutic sense, helping people to, to reach their goals, to get past anxiety, to sleep better. I mean, just if there's a, just a multitude of uses. In fact, people oftentimes, they ask me, you know, uh, well, can you help me with, with, uh, with this or that? And the answer is almost always yes, um, just because, again, once we, we know how to use that, uh, we know how to use that tool, that, you know, hypnosis, then... Uh, we can use it for just a variety of different things. Just if you can think it, we can we can help you change it. Really, is, is what it comes down to. So, using that tool, uh, I can I can entertain you. I can also um, help you to to reach your goals, get your desired outcome. So, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up right now. Um, I appreciate everyone who watched. Looks like we got a few a few people watching right now. And um, I really do appreciate it. Hey, if this kind of content is helpful for you, please, please share it, comment, like it, all of those kinds of things. Um, and uh, actually, uh, oh, and there's my, there's my. If you if you notice, damn, I'm pretty. That's why. If you'd like a free sticker, actually, you know what? Um, if you'd like a free sticker, if you're listening to this or watching this, I'm not offering this anywhere else. Uh, shoot me an email, Jim at jimkeller.com, or comment below, or message me. However you get a hold of me, give me your your mailing address. And I'm going to send you one. Now, uh, I'll probably do it for worldwide, unless it's, you know, like a ton of money to, to ship to Zimbabwe or something. I don't know what it is. But in the United States, Canada, Mexico, definitely. Other places, um, we'll see. Yeah, no promises. But, but probably. Probably. It can't be that much, right? Two bucks. But I'll send you a damn I'm pretty sticker. It may look like this. It may look like another one. You can put it on your coffee cup, and you can be pretty just like me. Again, Thank you so much for listening, for watching. Please help me out by subscribing, sharing, commenting, all that good stuff. Um, as I always say, you know, your success is my success. Take care. Be well. Be awesome. <laughs>